My name is Carlton Cartwright. I'm the Executive Director for the Children's Coalition Incorporated. And we are here today at the office of, sir, what is your name? Matt Willite. Okay, and um, Matt, uh, where, where, where were you born? I was born in Pontiac, Michigan. Okay, and um, you said, I think you told me in a previous conversation, uh, you were born in Michigan, but where did you grow up? Uh, at 10 years old, I moved to Lake Worth, Florida, where I grew up for most of my uh, childhood life. Okay, okay. Uh, tell me about your family background. Uh, obviously, I grew up in, or I was born in Pontiac, Michigan, and uh, uh, families around the car industry and the service industry. Uh, my dad was a work for an ambulance company, and my mom was a nurse, and uh, we've always kind of been, my aunt's a teacher, we were always kind of in the service industry business. Okay, and um, what is your current occupation? Uh, well, I, I hold two occupations, really. Uh, I'm a firefighter, par paramedic, and served as a captain with Palm Beach County Fire Rescue where I've been for the last 24 years, and I'm also a state representative for District 86 uh, in the Florida uh, Capitol in Tallahassee. Okay. Um, what about your education? Uh, I went to public education through K through 12, and then I attended Palm Beach State College, where I have an associate's degree in uh, emergency medical services. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, what branch of the service did you go in? Uh, I joined uh, the United States Navy and served as a corpsman. Uh, my dad was a corpsman in the United States Navy in Vietnam, coincidentally. And so, uh, being in the medical field and being a paramedic and things, it, it only was fitting to do that. Uh, even to explore more skills as a paramedic, I went over to the United States Marine Corps and served as a field medic uh, in the 4th Anglico United States Marine Corps. Why did you choose that branch? Uh, well, as I said, I, I chose the Navy, I think because of my uncle, my father especially was in the Navy as a corpsman, and then I wanted to be more out in the field and uh, doing things and hands-on and out of the woods and be on the front, and so I, I, again, I started with the United States Marine Corps doing that. Okay. Um, and, and did you say what year you went into service? Uh, I joined in 1999, and I did my one tour of eight years for, till 2007, I'm sorry, yes. Where, where did you enter into the service? Uh, right here in West Palm Beach, Florida. Basic training, where did you do that? Uh, I did my, uh, at uh, Great Lakes. How long was it? Um, well, because of the program I went into, it was actually an expedited program because I already had a lot of field experience, so I didn't go through the entire Navy basic training, but I did a, a portion of the basic and then uh, normally we'd go to A school after that but because I was already a medic in the field and working in that they uh, allowed me to use that school that training time as my A school. Okay explain that that's so was that like an ROTC program or? No no it was just an expedited program that they did to try and bring certain individuals in and certain occupations to, to bump up those classes or needs in the military and so they allowed us to use outside civilian training and experience and adapt it into the military. And and what school, what, what high school? Uh, well, I went to Lake Worth High School is where I went, but okay. I wasn't, you know, this was long after high school. Uh, oh, okay. So, all right, I'm trying to just connect the dots on this. So you went into service, you, you, didn't, you weren't in an ROTC program? No, I was not. Okay, so after? After high school and after college and getting hired with the fire department and going through EMT school and paramedic school, I then chose to go back and join the military because they had this program that allowed me to use my civilian medical training and incorporate it into the military. Cool. Okay. I still had to do uh, field medical service training school, which was partially in Camp Lejeune and Camp Pendleton. Uh, so they still gave us a lot of medical training, but this was more specific than to the field medical, and that was because I was with the Marine unit. Uh -huh. And how old, were you, how old were you when you eventually went into service? Um, so if I went in in 1999, mm -hmm. uh, 20, 28 years old. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, and by the way, what is your current address? Um, it's 15750 Lindbergh Lane in Wellington, Florida, 33414. Okay. Uh, at the time that you went in the military, were you married? Were you in a relationship? Or were you not, single? I was not married, but I was with my now current wife at the time, okay. dating. And what does your wife do? Uh, 
Uh, she is a budget analyst for Palm Beach County. Okay, cool. Um, did you have any children at the time that you went to service? No, I did not. You got any kids now? I do. I have two boys now. Oh, yeah? How old are they? 10 and 12. Okay. Um, did you see any combat? Uh, I was deployed for the first tour out of our unit to Cutter, where we were supposed to gear up to get a lot of things processed and then go uh, transfer to Iraq, but our unit didn't get deployed to Iraq at the time. Uh, the next four deployments after me did. Okay. So I spent a few months in Cutter getting things ready for our next deployments. And okay, from, the, from when you initially went in the service, were there any, um, any casualties in your in any of your groups or company? Uh, we had some injuries. We had, uh, we had a parachutist get severely injured. We had a couple of other um, injuries from training exercises. Okay, and, but no, no fatalities? Uh, not that I know of. Okay, um, so tell, how, when did you travel while you were in the service? What is, what, okay, to, oh, we're in, in the Middle East, you were, yes. right, I keep forgetting that that's, that's how, how that's pronounced. Right, we, we left uh, Camp Blaming and went to Spain and then into Qatar, or Qatar as some people call it, mm -hmm. uh, and then coming back we went through Italy and then back to Maryland and then back home. Uh, tell me about your instructors in basic training, what were they like? Uh, I think they're probably like both, most people that I've ever seen, they're very regimented and very severe, but service-oriented yet direct on what you're there for, uh, to train you and the needs in the, the military and, and bring you up to that level of what basic training and every minimal, to the level that any every soldier should have at a minimum of, of training. And then beyond that, obviously, like I said, is where you decide to go to your A school or your, your job profession in the military. Okay. What was your MOS, speaking of? Uh, I was in Corman, which was HM3, and E4, that was my last rank. And what was that, what did that encompass? Uh, medical service of training and field medical training. Obviously we did, uh, we, did we assisted the nur nurses and doctors where we did exams and shot immunizations and uh, paperwork and processing and things of that. And then obviously in the field we worked with any kind of trauma or injuries or wounds, uh, as a, as I would say, as a corpsman. Okay, um, did you, so, okay, did you work on anybody physically in that role that, who had been injured? Uh, not that had been injured, but prepping them to go. We did quite a few immunizations and, and cutter. Uh, that was central command there, so everybody that was going in country or needed their, needed their uh, you know, up-to-date shot records and immunizations and stuff, well, I processed a lot of those, yes. Okay. Okay. How did you, um, by the way, how did you stay in touch with your family while uh, you were in, in, in the service? Uh, mainly through letters uh, mm -hmm. and random phone calls. Okay. Uh, when, when it came time to take R&R, &R, did you go home or did you travel around? Uh, we, we did get some small R&R. shopping in town, but that was it. Uh, only, uh, you know, a few other times I had, it wasn't really R&R, &R, but to travel to another base in country and cutter to, uh, you know, take um, other soldiers that were injured or needed uh, more medical treatment at another base as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so did you, um, did you make any friends, any, you know, lasting friendships while you were in the service? No, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He's and, uh, still in touch? Yeah, but just uh, ironically, one of them was, is a, um, I just saw him last year in Tallahassee. Uh, he was up there, one of his co-workers get, was getting an award by the governor, and one of the other corpsmen that was deployed with me and served with me, that I, he still works for Miami-Dade Police Department, and I still talk to him. Uh, great guy, and uh, Luis Nieves, 
and then I obviously am still on some social media sites that I'm in contact with others. What was the food like? Uh, you know, every day it was different. <laughs> obviously, if you were in a, I'm out of base, it's easier than if you're out in the field. Uh, other than that, most field stuff, as you know, is uh, probably mainly MREs. Okay. When you were overseas, um, and you did, you did some traveling in Europe also, correct? Did, did you just, say you've been to Italy? Well, we just went through those bases. Okay. Well, and, and Qatar and the places that you traveled, what were the people like on the economy? What were those experiences all about? Um, you know, we really didn't interact with, with uh, the civilians, people, the civilians, just because uh, it was just safer that way for us to so not to interact and create any problems for not only our safety, but their safety as well. Okay. Speak, um, what was your level of... Uh, Stress, anxiety. Well, I mean, obviously, you're you're balancing two things: what what the needs of your your unit are and your your soldiers, uh, and then you're always concerned in the back of your mind what's going on at home with your family. You know, concerned about them and having things go. So, uh, you know, when you leave your 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 home and your family, they they have to pick up where where you leave off mm -hmm. and take up every bit of that while you're gone doing something else. And so you're. You have two levels of stress in my mind. Uh, obviously, the forefront one is right in front of you and what you're doing that day. But you are always considering those things in the back of your mind. Did you do anything special for, you know, to relieve yourself of um, stress, pressure, you know, uh, on a daily basis? You know, what were you, what kind of outlets did you have? I mean, we still did PT every day, so mm -hmm. that, that helped, obviously, to exercise and and, and relieve you of, of stress. And so we still did everything we would normally do, all training, PT every day to con continue to say battle ready, uh, so should you be sent in, uh, in country. Is, um, oh, did you have all the supplies? Were you ever in lack of anything uh, while you were on active duty? No, we were pretty resourceful. Okay. You're still in the reserve now? I am not. You're not? Did you do any reserve duty? Uh, well, that whole time I was in was reserves. Okay, right. It was called active duty at the time for your deployment. Correct, okay. So that's what I was really, was a reservist. What was the total amount of time you spent in, this, in the service? Uh, well, from 1999 to 2007. Okay. So eight years. Eight years. Okay. I think to ask. Okay, so where were you at the time that you separated? Uh, here. Okay. Oh, yeah. right. so you were. Yeah, right. the, the, the reserve base is on Belvedere Road, the Naval Marine Corps Reserve Center. Right there by Gun Club? Yes. No, it's on the north side of the airport. Okay, right. Gotcha. And um, what was, how did you feel about separating when you got it in your head? You know, you, you had a home strategy, I guess, about finally separating from the service. How did you feel about that? Well, yeah, I'm sure just like any other thing you're leaving that you've been a part of, mm -hmm. the anxiety of, and, and concern of leaving friends and, and you know, uh, not doing what you normally did, but obviously having a wife and wanting to start a family. Uh, you know, that was part of the reason why I had I had another job as well for the fire department, so. You still have that job? I do. Okay. Okay, so you just automatically just, it was a pretty smooth transition, just right in, you know, back into the, what you were right, already doing. Yeah, I mean, again, as a reservist, you're, you're, you're doing your regular job three weeks out of the year, and then that week or weekend a month that you're going to be a reservist, mm -hmm. you know, those two weeks a year um, that you're, doing that, let alone if you're deployed at different times, so it was fairly easy for me to transition back, yes. Okay, good. Um, GI Bill, did you utilize your GI Bill for anything? I have not, I never did. For education or? No, nothing. Otherwise, okay, all right. Um, so how long have you been a fireman now altogether? Uh, I've been in the fire service for 27 years. Wow. I've been working for Palm Beach County for Rusty for 24. Jeez. And you're still with them. That's that's commendable. It really is. Uh, tell me about two of your most memorable experiences when you were on active duty. And that that's basic training or overseas or wherever, as long as you were on active duty. Um, you know, obviously, uh, um, you know, sleeping in a in a tent in Camp Lejeune in August in the woods. Uh, it's real fun when the mosquitoes are the size of small birds and it's, you know, 130 degrees during the day in the woods is always fun, but as long as you're with your other soldiers and stuff, you know, it's the right thing to do and you're there. So, 
it may not seem like fun, but obviously that's where you build a lot of friendships. Okay. And then, um, you know, another time is obviously when you, um, you know, you're riding in the back of a C5 across the ocean backwards and, you know, you're sleeping anywhere you can in a plane because the back seats in a C5 are backwards and, you know, it's about probably 40 degrees in there. And, uh, and so it's just the other opposite. But, you know, again, that's where you're building your friendships and, and memories that you'll never forget. Camaraderie. Um, how did you get along by, well, with the enlisted? What, did you ever become an officer in the military? I did not. Okay. But I, because of my MOS, obviously, I got along with, with officers very well because in a unit, there's going to be multiple enlisted or, or uh, officers, but there's very few corpsmen. So with that, you know, you're, you're having to take care of everyone. And so, um, you know, I went to Fleet Week in New York with, you know, one officer and then another 20 enlisted up, you know, so I'm the only other corpsman then. So, and I was a little more in my age than, you know, just coming straight out of high school and going to boot camp. Uh, you know, I was a little older. So, so you, you didn't have any problems. Basically, the camaraderie, the camaraderie was there and, and you got along with everyone. Very well. I mean, your own words, exactly how you feel that the, the military, uh, what, what influence it had on your life overall? Well, I mean, no matter what you can say, it's an experience that you've already always uh, stepped up and raised your right hand to defend the Constitution of the United States. And with that, you have to have a mindset that you want to serve. And so that's why I think my life has been a life of service, whether it was with the military or the fire department, uh, you know, things like that. And so. I think it has a large influence on you, you know, not just because I've never had long hair, but because, you know, you, you have a sense of pride about yourself and, and you look at others and you, but you, you always have that, you always have that title of, you know, a veteran that any other veteran you see, you can always relate to them in some way, shape or form. And so, it, you know, it builds that camaraderie uh, with even veterans that you don't know just because um, you know, they, they, you've experienced some of the same things. Okay. What, what effect, if any, did the, war, well, the, the military have on your physical or mental health? Um, well, obviously physical. We all try and stay in the best shape we can because in there you're, you're taking, you know, fit testing all the time. Let alone, obviously, the fire department. I, I have to stay in fit, very physical condition as well. So it was easy to, to work both of those. Uh, because it was some of the same objectives. I, I don't really have anything negative to say about my time in the military, so uh, I was, and, and I do say that it, I thought obviously it was positive because again, I've, I've met a lot of people, I've gone a lot of places, I've done a lot of things that I would have never had the opportunity to do. Um, not just fun things, but you know, again, building those camaraderies, those friendships, but then helping others. Uh, you know, as a corpsman, obviously that, that's what my job was, but to help others and do things. And there was always those cases where you, you know, there was things that were difficult, and people, whether it was family issues or uh, different things that you were, they were dealing with that you tried to help them with. And so, uh, you know, and I think that's what I continue to try to do today is to try and conserve, is to serve others, uh, whether it be through the fire department or, uh, again, as my other job is, as well now as an elected official. And along that same line, uh, the influence that the military has had on you Doing, doing the job that you, that you have now, which is actually public service. Well, I mean, it's always been apparently public service. So how has the military helped you in your job as a, as a state representative today? Well, I mean, I think, I think anything you do um, is, is, that's thrown at you or comes at you, it's how you deal with it. And whether it's in the military, whether it's in the fire department, or whether it's in the public office, you're always willing to take something and make sure and meet the objective and the goal, which is to make something better. And so we don't just usually step back and say, I can't do it, or I don't want to do it. There's always uh, a, an objective of trying to overcome uh, the problem in front of you. And I think that's what a lot of soldiers are expected to do. And so I think, you know, as a state official, when you meet with people and they have problems, you, you, you identify the problems and you're, you're trying to file legislation or pass legislation that's helping others and you have a strong will to do that because you want to overcome that that you know that problem you over you adapt and overcome and you 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 know whether you, it's not just taking a hill it's taking a piece of legislation through the process and helping someone. Okay. 
Do you have any opinion on the state of the military today, present day, 2019? I mean, I think we have soldiers out there, airmen, sailors, and airmen out there every day, you know, sacrificing uh, not only themselves, but time away from their family to serve this country. Um, you know, you're never going to agree with everything there is in, in anything in life. But, you know, they're out there, they're out there, you know, doing the best they can. And, I, you know, I applaud every one of them. I appreciate their service. I know that I can put my head down on the pillow at night and my family can, knowing that we live in, you know, in the greatest country in the world and the democracy that we're in the things that we're afforded is because those soldiers, sailor, sailors and airmen are out there sacrificing their time and potentially their life uh, to make sure that, you know, we have the opportunities to do the things that we're doing. And so, um, you know, given the chance, would I go back in the military? You know, sure. I mean, it's a little harder, obviously, the older you get, but, you know, again, it's that friendship and that objective of serving and making sure that you're, you know, offering yourself to, to your other fellow countrymen or, or, you know, the other members of the service to make sure that, you know, our country is the strongest it can be in the world. Okay. Is there anything that you feel like uh, you've left out or anything else that you'd like to add? Um, you know, obviously I would implore anybody that's maybe not really sure what they want to do in their life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the military is always an opportunity for you. It's always the opportunity for you to make friends, get skills, uh, learn different things. You can obviously, uh, it teaches you some life skills, but they can also teach you some job skills. Obviously, as you mentioned with the VA, uh, the, the, VA the GI Bill, uh, medical care, all those other things that they can help a lot of our, you know, our young adults that are potentially not sure what they want to do. And so I think it's a great opportunity for them. Uh, I would encourage anybody that's not really sure to join the military. Um, it's again, it's not, it's not something that you will usually look back on in a negative light, because again, there's so many positives about it that it offers you and affords you. Absolutely. Okay, well, I want to thank you for a great interview, and I also want to thank you for your service.